I'm making is about uh, what's inside the head of a Boxford A model lathe from 1953. And this is a familiar front of the lathe, but the box has been taken off the lathe and completely dismantled. And so the box itself is empty. I could not find anything online about the parts that are actually inside this and where to buy them and things. So I thought at least um, I could make a little video of what I found inside. So here we go. Uh, so it's stripped apart. I left the um, race for the uh, tapered ball bearings in the casing here. So they're not disturbed. And uh, all the other parts though have been taken out. And this is the stack. Little bits. Actually it's not as complicated as some other lathes and I read online that uh, you shouldn't attempt to overhaul the head of a lathe unless you're qualified in gearbox repairs. Well, I think it's nonsense for this lathe because it's relatively simple. It wasn't really that hard to take it apart. I don't think it'll be too bad to put together. So this is actually the, um, probably the most important component we have is the main spindle and it's on a tapered bearing, a roller bearing. And there's another roller bearing here. Where is it? There. And it goes on here, that way around. So that the um, they and they're tightened up so that they're firm but still free to run and uh, not going to wear badly. Uh, but you can see how they're arranged. Uh, there's a thread on here. So when when we put this ball bearing race, I have to, have to do this all with one hand. When we put this ball bearing race on here, so it'll go on. Here we go. Um, you then put each of two of these uh, locking rings behind it. They're really just nuts, but they haven't got any hexagon on them. See, they're threaded. I go on this fine thread here, and therefore adjusting the tension on these on these tapered rollers, and there's two of them. So one one's actually the lock nut that goes behind it. That's all it has to stop it from coming undone. And by the way, even when this is assembled, these nuts can be uh, adjusted after it's assembled. So that's nice. The problem I had that I, led me to take this apart is that the back gear selector. There's two levers actually for back for selecting back gear. Um, one of them, the one on the front of the head, uh, wasn't functioning properly and it was jumping out of gear. And this is the lever I'm, lever I'm talking about that goes on the front of the main box. And it operates when you turn it. This gadget, which is on a basically a cam-shaped cam, cam -shaped, cam -shaped shaft. See how it's, uh, the, uh, it, the round is off center? As you can see in this picture, maybe. So that as you turn it around, this um, the, the bronze piece on the end moves up and down. And that moves the um, one of the gears. This is what it was like when I took it apart. Completely worn out. It's actually worn the pin down that holds it in place as well. And so it didn't work anymore. And so I just got a file and got some phosphor bronze and just shaped myself a brand new one. Good as new. So I now just have to assemble it again. Um, let's see where this actually works. Is on this gear here. This is uh, one of the part of the back gear mechanism. It causes this gear to slide along a captivated key. There's a key captive key in here. Captive just means it's been riveted into place, so that it can't be knocked out or dropped out accidentally. And that key slides along this key channel along the main spindle and this allows this gear to move hor horizontally or along longitudinally along that spindle and what drives it back and forwards of course is this little bronze piece which is on this cam device so that moves the back gear in and out when you push it in it engages these holes with these pegs so it's um, moving around until if you push it in, it'll move around until such time as the pegs engage. I think I can make it do it by with one hand like this. There we go. So now it's engaging, and um, at that point, uh, that gear is driving, or at least the pulleys, the the motor is actually connected to these pulleys, right? So the the motor is now connected to this gear, which then drives the main shaft, the main spindle, which has got your chuck on this eight thread per inch thread at the, on the end of the spindle. So that's where your chuck goes. And so that gives you high speed gears. But when you want back gear, you have to disengage this by pulling this lever across. 
um, and also engaging the the main back gear itself which is also also shown here this is the actual back gear now let's put this back together again here so this um, back gear part mounts inside the head this is looking at the back of it and this is the bottom where it clamps on to the bed so i've got it upside down and it goes in here and in this hole here is this screw and spring which pushes the ball bearing down which i hope is still in there and um, you screw that in and the ball bearing drops into here so that's that's what locks it into either of your back gear positions and the problem was the screw had come really loose and so it wasn't locking in and that's why it was jumping out of back gear so that was really simple to fix as well that's the only two problems i found with it just the screw had come loose and that um, bronze selector piece had uh, completely worn out and they're both easy fixes uh, so i'm putting it all back together now and hope to have a nicely functioning lathe again i have my lathe positioned against a wall so i couldn't see in the back of it so i've put the iPhone camera uh, in behind the uh, the head to try to see if I could understand what was wrong with it. Not very successfully. I really had to take it apart to find out. And these little videos show the belts that can be adjusted to alter the speed of the chuck. And notice there's a couple of grease nipples on here which uh, shouldn't be neglected. Looks like they've had a bit of surplus grease pouring out. And this other device is the um, tensioning screw with a left-hand thread on the bigger part of it and a right-hand thread on the bottom part so that it acts like a um, turnbuckle actually to increase the tension on them, or at least on the belts. This is something good to know about, I didn't realise until I took it apart, that you can actually take the belt um, off this. It has this device here that goes on the end of the pulleys above the motor. This is a sort of idler shaft. Um, and that, it's just got um, two grub screws in the side there you can remove with an Allen key. Now unfortunately the, um, pulley, the only way you can get the um, belt out of the head is to completely dismantle it to put it over the spindle. Uh, so that's tricky. Um, you can buy special belts that are, um, have links that you can take apart. Uh, and that's what most people do, I think. Otherwise, if you're using a standard V-belt, you have to t dismantle a whole head in order to get the belt over the spindle. Here's the motor with its two pulleys. This particular motor, by the way, has a condenser sitting on the top. Um, anyway, um, these pulleys connect to the idler pulley on the back, and you can get access to that one to replace the pulley without any difficulty. The left-hand belt runs up from the motor up to the idler pulley system. This belt can be adjusted uh, using a screw underneath the big wheel on the gear train here. Unfortunately I didn't remove it so you can't see it very well but you can adjust that uh, that belt by adjusting the position of the motor. Here's the gear train and we are just about to remove it. Now it's gone along with the reversing lever and uh, before we actually remove the head, I'd like to show you how it's clamped on with these pictures that were taken off later in the process. Uh, it's got these plates underneath, uh, which clamp up on the underside of the bed, as you can see here. And the screw that holds it in is quite difficult to get to. Uh, so it's a bit tricky to get that off. Fortunately, mine wasn't tight. Uh, and I think that's the reason why, is because it's difficult to put it on and take it off without if you tighten it up completely. Then there are end caps that go over the uh, tapered roller bearings that are inside the head. These are the caps held on by four cap head screws. And there's a race for the roller bearings still in place in the head. I did not remove those. And this is the inside view of the head after removing all the parts. This is the back end. There's the three little holes you can see there are for the reversing gear, which we'll see in a moment. Is the inside view and here are all the bits that came out of it and we'll go over some of that detail as we go on and this is uh, information I couldn't get online so I thought it might be useful to make this video this is the reversing lever with two little idler wheels and the position of the lever locks into those three 
holes, a little peg drops into the holes to lock it into place. And actually you can see the peg here. This is the re reversing gear mechanism you can clearly see from the uh, in the gear train. And look at these gears, you'd swear they've never been used. And they've been t turning probably all the time. And you'd think in a high school they'd probably get a fairly good hammering, although perhaps not as much as it would in an industrial setting where lathes are being just used continuously. By the way, this shaft always worried me that when you're changing the stud gear, this uh, shaft can disappear straight into the into the head. So that's a bit weird. As if you take that nut off, it'll come right out. I'm not sure why they made it like that, or whether it's not supposed to be made like that. I don't know. You turn this lever around. See how that that's off center. So it's got a hole in the center drilled, or a hole through the shaft that's drilled off center. And actually, you can see at the other end, it's also off-center. So you can turn it one way, and it, when you turn that around, you can imagine it, hold, it makes the whole shaft move back and forth and engage and disengage. And actually, the one place that I found in this whole outfit that hadn't been lubricated was here. Uh, this is hidden inside, uh, inside the head of the lathe, and probably gets often missed. And this shaft was just a tight, had a touch of rust on it, just a, and it was very dry. So I'm going to have to make sure that I lubricate that well. In the future. But otherwise everything it's amazed me actually this lathe is 66 years old and you'd swear these gears are brand new. I'm talking about. So Here's the main spindle we were looking at a minute ago with its tapered bearing here and its counter tapered bearing at the back end. And the drive pulley with its com drive coming from the motor, which drives this gear wheel. And at the moment the pegs are engaged, so it's actually driving that gear. Um, but if we move this selector lever across, we can disengage that one. And, and then we can take this other back gear lever on the side of the head and, it, and pull that forwards to engage it and it just pushes this gear and that gear into, into play. So this one engages with this gear, this one engages with that gear which is now disconnected by these pins, from these pins. So now the drive comes from the belts from the motor through to this gear which drives that gear which is connected to this smaller gear which drives this gear and that gives much slower RPM. And this is still connected through that captive key which we saw on the shaft. So there you have it, that's how it all works. Um, this uh, back gear lever is uh, on a cam shaped system. Now this uh, pulley system is on the uh, main spindle with a key, remember, and when you turn the lever on the front, this bronze selector piece goes into that slot and as you turn it, it causes the gear wheel to move up and down in this image or along the shaft. and. Uh, you could see a little bit of bronze there, but you can see how it would move in and out so that the pegs engage in the holes. And if you turn the lever and pull the gear out a little bit, it disengages. And this is what the piece looked like when I took it apart, completely worn out. So I decided I had to make a new one, so I just quickly hacksawed a piece of metal, a bit of bronze and filed it to fit. I could have filed it a little bit more to make it uh, perfect, but uh, it'll soon wear down and fit in neatly. And then I drilled a hole through it so for that uh, peg to go into. So just center tapping it, then I drilled it. In the next episode, we'll put it all back together again.